Hello, welcome to this video. We're going to again talk about vertex animation tools and specifically here for fluids or dynamic remeshing. In Houdini, I already have a setup, so we can get these files as well. So here, when I play the animation button, we have this fluid simulation here in action. So again, before I'm going to export this, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how this is set up. So you have some idea of what's going on. So what I did first here is actually place three emitting sources. So each sphere will actually emit a certain fluid. Then I converted that into fluid source. So this will actually, as you can see, turn it into a voxel with points. Then next up, I'm going to actually transfer a normal direction, as you can see, to where the fluid should go for. So I'm using the, the normal currently to visualize that, but I'm also going to use a wrangle then to convert our normal into velocity. So this is then used in my simulation to guide the particles in that direction. So in the particle or the dot network here, we have our actual like fluid objects. And then I also here have my collision object or static object. So the static object is basically here, this here. So I'm using a null node to reference that in there. So it's just like a basic class. So with this small setup, we have this simulation. And I'm going to turn those particles into actual geometry here with this node. So now it's actually, as you can see, geometry. Also important here will be actually setting this to a surface polygon. So it's important here that if, for example, I enable the polygon numbers, that each polygon has a specific number. Uh, by default, if we, for example, take polygon soup, we will see that each number is the same and the tool will not like that because the tool wants to know how many polygons there are. So the vertex animation tool would like to know how many polygons do I have. So it's going to just return one because there is only one polygon. So make sure you are setting this into the right uh, polygons. So each polygon has a specific number. Then also for the coloring, I could just here visualize velocity and give this some nice blue color. So we actually have something like this. So with that set up, this is my basic simulation here. And now let's look into actually exporting this. So again, I'm going to reference the null nodes in my system. So now for exporting this, we're going to go here to my output. If you don't have this, you can create an extra one. So network view and switch and switch to output. So in my output, I'm going to just type in vertex animation tools. And here we're going to fill in our properties that we want. So first of all, we need to say, what are we working with? So we are working with a fluid or dynamic remeshing. So as it, as the word it's saying, it's dynamically remeshing. So the topology is not consistent over time. So every time your play count is not consistent over time, uh, this is actually the recommended method. Then we're also going to say this is for unity. So the tool knows that. And then we have our start and ending frame. So right now it's just going from one to hundred. If you want more, you can do more, uh, but I'm going to leave it to hundred. Then we have our input geometry. So we're going to click the button here and I'm going to input my fluid sim here. So output fluid. So it's that null node. And then I'm going to play around with some parameters. The first parameters we have here are specifically for the fluid dynamic remeshing. Important here is that we actually have two passes. So we're going to have to render two times which I will come back in a moment. We can also here fuse the points. So your simulation might want to use this. You can disable this if you don't want it. We can also export certain data if we need a certain compressing of the normals. If we need to have certain UV data, we can then import that as well. Then here we have settings for all modes. So here this is saying if we are caching to geometry, so currently it's not cached. So I'm not using the file caching node system. Uh, because it's a small setup. Uh, so if you're caching this, just leave it on. Then we have two uh, formats here. So we have the lookup table and our textures. So the lookup table will be non-HDR format and the texture format will be in HDR format. This is just important to remember when we import this into Game Engine. Then there are some more settings for exporting certain data. So spare colors, uh, custom attributes you want to maybe export. So the velocity of a certain fluid, you can export that as well. And then here we have our targeted sizes. So make sure the lookup table is always bigger than your target. So that's just important to keep in mind 
that the lookup table is bigger. Uh, most of the time your default settings will give for good results, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Then we're going to go here to our inputs. So this is what we can input to the tool. So by default, it requires a position. So each point here has a position data by default. We can optionally add some colors, UVs, uh, other data, as you can see here. So we can import that with attributes into the tool. Then we have our export. So where do I want to export this? So I'm going to just say uh, Unity Fluid. And then I have my asset naming. So this is actually referencing the node name. So we can also here say Fluid Sim. Then we have our naming suffix. So here we can say add to our naming files the frame count or FPS. Uh, if you're wondering what the FPS is, we can go here all the way down at the bottom and we have here our FPS. So this might be useful to know if you want to have this simulation on a higher FPS. Then here we have our actual output files. So we will have a geometry. We will have then three textures for position, rotation and color. And you can change this if you want to have only like, for example, geometry and position. So you can change that. We also have then a specific file for the lookup table and then also a file for our Unity material. Furthermore, we have our advanced settings, but I'm not going to touch too much of these. Uh, we also have the render target, which we're also not going to use. And lastly, we have our actual package and guides. If you need any help, press on the button to get some more information. So we're basically now good to go. And we're going to make sure we are here on the first render pass which will only output geometry, lookup table, and some other data like our uh, material. So we're going to just click render. Once that is done, we're going to switch then to our next pass. So second pass, and this will then actually output uh, the other missing data, which are the animation data, like the position. So we're going to again press render. When everything went right, you should have this folder as output. So we have our geometry. Then we have our textures, which will be our lookup table here, and then our three animation textures for color, position, and rotation. So this is my final output. Then we also have our Unity output, which is a material. So we can import that uh, into Unity in a moment. So here we are in Unity, and let's now import the fluid data here in this folder. What I can basically do is just grab the folders and drag and drop them into my project. What you could also do is directly save here into your Unity project if you want to. So it's up to you where you want to have the files. So now we have everything imported, but we want to also set import settings. So let's go out to geometry and we can actually set settings for import the geometry. So we have some presets available. So I'm going to click on presets and we have vertex animation textures Houdini. So click on that and press apply. Then we're going to do the same for textures. So I'm going to select all of them and we're going to here use our preset and I'm going to use our HDR settings. So double click and press apply again. So now they all have set to a specific settings. So you don't have to manually tweak them each time. Uh, so you can just use these presets. Now next up is grabbing your geometry and they probably are just a bunch of triangles. And then our shader will actually move them in the correct position. So here, let's place them over here and let's now go to our material. So here we have our material. It's already set up for us. And the only thing we have to do is fill in our textures. So I'm going to press the lock here at the top. I'm going to go to my textures and then I'm going to grab my textures and fill them in the right place. So we have our color. So color, we have the lookup table, uh, which is all the way down here. Then we have our position, which is the top. So make sure it's position one, not two. And then we also have our rotation. So here, a rotation. So these are the textures I have to fill in. So now let's try this out and apply the shader or the material on this geometry. So let's drag it on here. And if everything goes right, you should have this result. So it's the exact same result in Houdini here now in Unity. So again here by default, if I actually would release my mouse, the animation will actually stop. So this is just a setting of Unity. So when actually I move and interact with my viewport, I can actually see everything uh, update correctly. I can also now press play and see it in action. So here I'm actually in play mode. And as you can see, it's like perfectly working as it should be. So we have the exact same fluid sim that we had with colors. Uh, and, it looks, and it looks pretty good. So again, you could make something more interesting, more complex. Uh, but this is already quite nice to have a certain fluid animation here.
we're almost done with these videos. The last thing I want to mention is you can actually hear this material. Uh, so we have the shader from the package and you can actually edit the shader. Now here is the shader graph uh, and you can start editing this. But I would highly recommend you actually making a copy before doing that. So we can all the way go down here to our packages into our shaders. We can actually copy here uh, our uh, graph so we can copy the shader graph. So we have our sub node, which is the sub graph. Uh, but I recommend, highly recommend you copying the shader graph if you want to tweak the settings. Uh, and important here to know is that we actually have a vertex and the fragment here options. So our vertex animation node here for the dynamic remeshing will have the data sent here to the vertex. And to get that data furthermore, we actually use a node here with a custom interpolator uh, to get, for example, here that color into our fragment here. So know that you need some of that data differently. So make sure you are actually using these data correctly if you adjust it. Uh, also here, for example, if you want to have the custom UV, you need to use this node, which is again referencing to uh, the surface UV. So don't directly plug in uh, the UVs in here. Uh, use that custom interpolator to have actually the correct data. So that's just recommended doing. And that was it for this video. So I shared you how you could bring in this fluid simulation from Houdini into Unity by using the Vertex Animation toolsets. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.